what's up everybody i'd like to welcome you to another juice tutorial and in this tutorial what we're going to do is go through a very quick implementation of the audio visualizer component class so this is a very quick and easy way to, for you to visualize the audio signal that's coming through your plugin or audio app before we get started i just wanted to announce a couple things be sure to check out the audio programmer podcast so we've now got that on spotify and apple and we're working on a couple other platforms as well for that uh, we had a great conversation with dave roland from traction talking about the traction engine and about how to build a daw and that got a lot of great feedback and we're going to have some more great guests coming up soon so be sure to check that out on spotify and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you're finding the channel and the community helpful for you, um, check out the Patreon. So we have so we have a Patreon set up if you want to uh, give us some money. So uh, you can uh, get um, T-shirts, uh, stickers, uh, hoodies, depending on how much you want to uh, give to the cause. So. Uh, uh, so that's much appreciated. You don't have to, of course. And also, uh, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. So cool. So let's go ahead and get into things. So what we have here is the uh, API for the audio visualizer component class. And this is, as I was saying before, a very quick and easy way for us to be able to visualize our audio signal. So what I have here, if I just go to my code is I just actually have the uh, code from this tutorial I did a way long time ago uh, on a uh, wavetable sine wave. And so we're just going to put a visualizer in this really quick. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to just do a quick class that's going to uh, set up our audio visualizer component. Don't really need to do this but uh, we could just do this really quick. So I'm just gonna call this class visualizer. I'll, I'll put it with an S like they do with the uh, juice stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to inherit the functionality from the audio visualizer component. So I can just do that by doing a public audio visualizer component. So that gives me all the functionality that I need for uh, to build this visualizer. So we can put uh, public access, we could do private access here for this class. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a constructor. Uh, or, oh, I'm gonna, before I go on here. So class normally has to be with a capital here. So we're just keeping with convention here. So this is gonna be visualizer. And then since this visualizer is a type of audio visualizer component, uh, we could just initialize it. So if we go back to our documentation here, we'll see that our constructor needs to take uh, an, an argument here to initialize it, which is the initial number of channels that we want the uh, visualizer to have. So we'll have two channels. So audio visualizer component and we'll put two channels there and then we're not going to have separate header files for this so uh, this is just going to be everything kind of all in one since it's so small and we can look here and we can see some of the different things that we can initialize here we got set samples per block, uh, set the buffer size. So this is how quickly or how slowly the, uh, the visualizer will kind of go. So if you have the buffer going extra fast, then it has to, then it's going to uh, be processing super quick and you're gonna see the audio coming through very quickly. So we can just set buffer size. We'll just put this at an initial value of 512 and then we'll put uh, set samples per block. So this is kind of your resolution, I guess you could say. And we'll put this at, let's just say 256 for now, and see how that goes. Okay, we can actually get rid of this because we don't need any private variables here. So I think we're fine here. 
Um, we need a semicolon here because it's a class and that's fine. So down here we have this class that we have that we were doing all of this um, sine wave business. I'm not going to go through all that. If we just go straight to the bottom, what we could do is we could just create a visualizer. So we got visualizer uh, is the name of our class that we just created. And then I'll just put visualizer in lowercase here. And then let's see what we need to do in order to actually do this. So uh, we have, let's see what other functions we have here. So like I said, this is quite, quite easy here. So we can do uh, set colors here. So we can actually put this in our constructor where we can set the background color and the waveform color. So let's go back up here. We'll do set background, set colors, and then we'll do colors, and we'll do black for the background, and then for the waveform, we'll do colors. Let's do, let's do Indian red. That looks good. So, then let's see what else we got to do here. So in the prepare to play, I'm just going to do, uh, we have a clear method here that clears the contents of the buffer. Not sure if we actually need to do that. I'm just going to do it here. Uh, so I could just do visualizer. So that's the class name. We need the one with the lowercase. This one here and then clear. Okay. And then Let's see here. So here's our audio block here. And we can just put it here. Visualizer dot. Let's see what our method name is. So here we have a couple different ways that we can push into the buffer. Uh, we could do samples per channel. I'm just going to do this quick and easy one here. So we could do audio source channel info buffer to push. And here is our buffer, our, our audio source channel info. So we just need to put that in there. So we got push buffer. And we can here put buffer to fill in here. So since it's a type of component, so if we look at our diagram here, we can see that we have the audio visualizer component and that inherits from component. So we have, uh, so since it's a component, then what we need to do is we need to draw that to the screen. So the way that we do that is if we go into our main constructor, then what we could do is we need to actually make it visible. So we could do add and make visible and visualizer. That's how we make it visible. And now we need to draw it to the screen. So if we go down here, so let's see. So these are kind of statically drawn. Uh, is static the word for it? I don't know if it is, but you get what I mean. It's not using like a flex box. So, so our size here is 800 by 100. I'm just going to make this bit bigger. Let's make it 800 by 400. And then what we could do is we could do uh, visualizer dot set bounds. And then let's see here. So our X position, we'll just put, we'll just draw this here, just get it on the screen and then we can refine it. So if it's 50, so, so the amp slider is going 50 down on the Y axis and it's 50. So that would be 100. So let's make the Y, uh, axis start at 110. And then here we can just do get width and I'll just put minus 100 for now. And then the height I'll put at 200. And let's just try that and see if that actually does what it's supposed to do. Okay. Since it's a sine wave, 
since it's a sine wave, you may want to turn down your headphones just a little bit so I don't blow your ears out. I'm not going to turn it way up, but. So there we go. So we have a signal there. Yeah, so that, so that works fine. And uh, you can see that the signal's not that big because I, because I don't want to turn it up too loud and, and blow your ears out. So we could just tighten that up a little bit. Let's, let's maybe bring that back to 200. See if we can get more of kind of a, there we go. So that's, so that's a bit better. So now what we could do is we could actually go up here really quick and we can actually start playing around with these numbers. So if we want it to be something that's a little bit more signy, then we could, let's say we make this 16. Is this right? So we'll just play around with these and do a little bit of experimentation. So we got this. There we go. Let's see. So. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of gives you more of a signy fill. And then if we wanted the buffer size to go maybe a little bit slower, then we can just set this to 1024. Do it like this. So turn it up. And as you can see, that goes a lot quicker. All right. As opposed, as opposed if I do this, let's try something really super like slow, like uh, 128 here. Okay. As you can see, that's a lot, that's a lot slower. It's kind of aliasing because you can see it go the other way. Uh, great. So, so that's where I'm going to end this tutorial. Once again, if you like this video, you found it useful, be sure to like it and subscribe. I'm going to upload this on my GitHub and put the link in the description below. And that's it. And I will see you again soon.